How's it going? I've got here the long-awaited single-wire Sonoff smart switch. People have been asking for this for a long time. Let's check it out. So let's dig in. This is interesting. There's some other module involved in this. This is probably how they get it to work without having a light bulb. If you didn't have a light bulb in there, you would need this. Why do I try and figure it out? I just, just read it and it tells you. This is a UK switch or an EU switch. It is not a US switch. That doesn't matter as much as the technology involved in getting them it to work without a neutral wire. This is the little box. It's probably just some kind of resistor. Let's just see what this is. That's it. That's all it is. My guess is they're just huge resistors. Why do I guess? Why don't I just look it up? All right, well, that's what you can use to make it so that it works even if you don't have a light bulb in there. If you don't have this and you don't have a light bulb, the switch will not work. It is the older style, at least this one is. There might be other styles that have the newer version that's a square that's not painted on like that. Down here, looks like we've got serial pins for flashing. There is our standard ESP8285 chip, just like the other touch switches. Jimmy that a little and you can get it off. This is going to be the part with the relay and such. I'm feeling confident that we can flash this with Tasmoda pretty easily. But for now, we're going to just connect it up as it comes and test it out a little. But before we're done, we'll flash it. Fear not. So this no neutral required switch or single wire switch works in a situation where you've got something like this, where the power comes in to the light and then two wires go out to where the switch is. And so it would have been one of these old kind of switches. We're going to take that out and we're going to use this instead. On the back of this switch, there are two contacts, line in and line out. In the example I've wired up here, I put the hot wire to this white. That's probably not the way it is going to be in your wall, but as long as the hot wire goes in on line in, you're doing it right. And I do like these connectors. I feel like these are a bit more robust screw in connectors than some other switches. I know that this light bulb is good, so I expect as it is, it will work without this. But I'm going to install this and then we'll take this out and test it again. There's that. Now we can turn it on. Oh, the light came on. This should work. Ah, it works. Now let's test my theory that it will still work if you take the light bulb out. Yep. Well, of course there's no light. You can hear the relay clicking. So that's because of this guy here. So now I'm going to take this out and try it again. Okay, power back up. Oh, no, it doesn't work so much. Okay, well, that's important to know. Interesting. So you really do need to have this part in there or it's not going to work. That means that you do have to get access to the light to connect this little guy. Huh. If that's the case, then why not just put like a Sonoff Mini up here? All right, got this back installed. I didn't damage anything, it still works, so. There it is, the basics of it. Now I'm pretty sure that nobody watches my videos to learn how to use the eWeLink app. So let's flash this sucker with Tasmoda. For flashing, you need to take this upper circuit board off. This is the same as it's always been for all these Sonoff touch switches. You don't need this part. I don't know exactly where GPIO zero is on this board. It's easy to see the serial pins. They're right there at the top. But since I don't know where GPIO zero is, I'm going to have to find it. The way I'm going to do that is by taking my multimeter, putting it on continuity mode. And I know GPIO zero is right here. So I'll put one probe from my multimeter on GPIO zero on the chip. And then I'll start poking around the board until I hear the beep 
that says those two places are in continuity or they're connected. So let's go GPIO zero hunting. That is GPIO zero and it pokes through to the other side of the board and it's the furthest one of this bundle of four. It's this one on this left side when it's upside down. So it just travels a short distance and then it goes back through to the other side of the board. So I turn the board back over and the only thing it could be is this track right here and it, you can't really see where it comes back up through the board. You can't see the hole very well because it's un under that C. But then it comes here and goes to the underside of the board again. So it's going to be one of these. So it's this track. If I keep my probe on that spot, you can get an idea of which component it is when you flip it over. And it looks to me like it's R10 right here. So that's the one I'm going to try. That's it. Bingo. So GPIO zero is this side of this R10 resistor. Well, that's not going to be easy for flashing. So connecting to GPIO zero is going to be a little tricky. We'll have to solder on a wire. At least that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take this tiny little bit of spare wire and I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the tip. I want this wire to be able to reach the ground pin up here. So I'm just going to point it up like that. And then I'm just going to take that tip that I just added some solder to and just heat it up next to that resistor. And there you go. Now I'll flip this back over. I'll put my probe on GPIO zero, which is this corner, counting in one, two pins right there. And then I'll touch this wire. And there we go. So now I've extended GPIO zero to some place where I can reach it. Yay. Now we can flash. Now I've got my trusty FTDI adapter and I've got my green wire on RX. So that means it's going to go to TX over here. The blue wire is on TX over here. So it's going to go to RX over here. And then orange is three volts and ground is black. Okay, I think that's probably connected. <laughs> now I can plug in my FTDI adapter to my computer. Now I open my flasher of choice. I'm going to use flash ESP8266.exe. It's already got my COM port selected. That's a great sign. And I'm going with the latest version of Sonoff.bin. Flash and hold your breath. It's working! Man. First time every time. But that's really it. Any of these ESP8266 or 8285 chips, you can flash through this exact same process. You just need the serial pins, which is RXTX. You need ground, you need three volts, and you need GPIO zero. You connect GPIO zero to ground, connect your FTDI adapter to those serial pins, and away you go. And flash complete. And then right away, we should see a Sonoff Wi-Fi right there. And then in your browser, you put 192.168.4.1. And now you can put in your Wi-Fi and save it. And now I'm going to go to Tasmo Admin to find it. Auto scan. And there we go. It found my device. I'm going to change the name to Sonoff T4, which is, I guess, technically what they're calling this. They have T0, T1, T2, T3, now T4. And it's at this address. So save that. And then somewhere in this list, I will now find Sonoff T4 right there. And there's the IP address. Another awesome thing about Tasmo Admin that I didn't mention last time, and Mark M reminded me, is that it shows you the version of Tasmoda that you're running and it allows you to easily update one or all of them to the latest version if you want to. I still have some pretty old ones. 5.8 maybe is the oldest. The Toy Room, that's the very first one I ever installed. <laughs> still not updated and it's still working fine. I'm not gonna mess with it. Okay, let's go to T4 and we're gonna start doing the configuration we need. 
configure module, I'm going to configure this as a touch and it's just a one channel T1. And then the rest of the normal stuff we do, definitely want to configure MQTT. I just like making sure that all this stuff is consistent. A couple other things that I do pretty much every time I do switch retain one and power retain one. I started using power retain one and switch retain one on every Sonoff after Rob did a great video about MQTT retain messages and how sometimes that's what's causing ghost switching. Uh, last thing I'll do is set option 19 for auto discovery. Now that I don't need it anymore, I'm going to remove this wire from GPIO zero. I'm a little worried about just yanking it. So I'm just going to clip the wire. Those pins, that header. That couldn't be much easier. T4 EU one channel. The naming system is actually making sense. I like that. Get our test scenario back out again. Got our light bulb. We've got this little resistor module connected. Connect these back up. Again on mine, I've got the white as the line in, which is probably not right, but whatever. Plug it in, turn it on. Oh, it is not happy. Uh oh. Hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. No relay clicking either. And no Wi Fi. So I set it as a Sonoff basic module, and some of it works. I can toggle it on and off here. But the button doesn't work. Sonoff touch or Sonoff T11 channel. I would expect it to be the same, but okay, that part works. But nothing here. Well, I've been trying unsuccessfully to get this touch button to work. Been chatting with some of the people who know a lot more about Tasmoda than I do. I'm confident that at some point, someone will figure out how to get it to work. I know Jonathan Oxer from Superhouse TV mentioned that he's going to be working on this device, and he certainly has a lot more electronics knowledge than I do. So the solution is coming, but I don't have it today. But I don't want to end this video without giving you something that a lot of people have asked for for a long time. So I've got a little something in mind, and that is how to get She Who Shall Not Be Named to work with your Sonoff device after you've tasmatized it if you don't have Home Assistant, Nabucasa, and all that stuff. I think we can do that. It'll be useful, and we'll end the video on a positive note. Sound good to you? Sounds good to me. So here's my Sonoff T4. I'm gonna go into Configuration and Configure Other. And there is a section here about emulation. We've got two options here, Belkin Wemo, or Hue Bridge. Now we tell she who shall not be named to discover new devices. Well, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I just got this notification. New plug named Sonoff T4. Turn on Sonoff T4. Sorry. I didn't find a device named Sonar TV. <laughs> well, don't name your switch Sonoff T4. <laughs> that might be making it difficult for her. She can't understand what I'm saying, apparently. <laughs> but let's go to the app, and it will probably be visible in this app. There we go. Now, you can see at least that the LED is changing. So that worked eventually. Somehow, <laughs> you can see it changing states 
up there in the MQTT as well. You can see the light changing down here. So what did I do? I just gave it more time, I guess. It seemed to not discover it after I tried a few times, but after I really stopped trying, all of a sudden it discovered it. I would like to see if we can get the Hue emulation to work. This is the Wemo emulation. And there were definitely some posts that said the Hue emulation was better than the Wemo emulation. So let's try it again. Configure other. Let's change it to Hue bridge. We'll go to the console. We'll type emulation and we'll make sure that it's active. Emulation two is active. Let's just try one more time verbally to she who shall not be named. Discover new devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Power on your new devices now, and if needed, put them in pairing mode. I Check. couldn't find any new smart home devices. You can try again, or if you need help connecting, tap help in the smart home section of the Alexa app. I'm also going to click discover here on the website. That seemed to be what I did last of all the things I tried before. Certainly plenty of people report that they just turn on emulation, tell her to discover devices and it works. Why it works for some and not for others. So much for ending the video with a success. Well, I guess it was a success, right? I did get the Wemo emulation to work. Royal Phillips Electronics. Whoa, what? Huh? <gasps> it worked. Look at that. It worked. <laughs> what? Go figure, I didn't do anything. It said it didn't discover anything new. I searched for the name of it and it could only find the Wemo, but now there it is. On a scale of one to 10, with maximum helpfulness being a 10, this is about a two. Pretty much all I've done is shown you that it works, some things that should make it work, and that I can't explain why it worked when it said it wasn't gonna work. Well, let's see it work. It says it's on. Now it says it's off and you can see the state change over here on the Tasmoda interface as well. It says it's on, it says it's off. We'll try again with the voice commands, but she doesn't seem to like the, what I named this switch. Turn on Sonoff T4. Sorry, I didn't find a device named Sonos T4. <laughs> so if maybe if I change the name, and it would change everywhere else to something that she could understand. But obviously it's included in her list of things that are in my home because it is controlling the light on the board. Let's try this. Turn off S on off T4. Sorry, I didn't find a device named S TV. S T V. Turn off Sonoff T4. Sorry, I didn't find a device named Sonos TV. <laughs> That's it. I'm done trying. You win some, you lose some, and some are rained out. It's great that Sonoff has a new no neutral switch. I'm pretty sure at some point it'll work with Tasmoda, but right now it doesn't. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching, even when it fails. Till next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.